I'm going to now take some measurements as if I'm going to fit you with a pair of spectacles. Mm -hmm. So one of the first measurements I want to do is I want to see what distance your pupils are. So before I do that, I'm just going to do a cover test. All right, so what I want you to do is look at my left eye. There's no movement there, that's good. Now if you look at my right eye, and again, no movement, perfect. So there's no esophoria there. Now what I want to do is, if you just look at my finger there, and my finger there, this is called a mono pupil distance reading, and I've got 32 millimeters for each eye. Mm -hmm. So your pupil distance, this is called a pupil distance measurement, mm -hmm. is set at 64 millimeters. If I did this same cover test, this same measurement, but you was wearing your spectacles, mm -hmm. then you would be having a centration pupil measurement. Mm -hmm. And the difference is you've got that gap between your eyes and the glasses. And sometimes that can make a difference on the measurement, mm -hmm. especially if it's for near vision measurements. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So I also want to measure the distance. So I'm going to get a pick up a pair of spectacles for you to put on. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to measure the distance of the length of the side to the back of your ear. Okay. All right. I'll just be two seconds. Okay. If you want to put that frame on for me. And this is called... This measurement is called the length to bend. Mm -hmm. So what I'd like you to do is look across this way for me. And I'm measuring not from the front of the frame, but to the end of the side. And your length to bend is 103 millimetres. Mm -hmm. Now, if you want to turn your head the other way, and now I'm measuring it from this side. And in fact, your ear is slightly further forward on this one. I've actually got that at 97 millimetres. Mm -hmm. So that is the evidence that you're not perfectly symmetrical. Mm -hmm. Very few people are symmetrical. Mm -hmm. And they say the prettiest people in the world are symmetrical. All right. <laughs> Thanks for that. All right. This particular frame has got nose pads. Now these come in about 10 different sizes. And in this case, this one is a screwing nose pad. Mm -hmm. So using my screwdriver, I'll be able to undo that and okay. take it off. Some of the nose pads are pushing nose pads. And there's a little square box at the back here, which is no back on it. And it would just clip into there. And then using a pair of pliers, you just tighten it up a little bit so it can't push back off. Mm -hmm. And that's the difference between them. And obviously with the different sizes, you can have very small little round ones going all the way up to 20 millimeter. Right. Very large pads. Right. Although the very large pads don't look as pretty, they are yeah. much more comfortable. Right. So if you were- Can you get uh, silicone ones? In fact, most of them are silicone right. these days. Right. Um, some people have allergies to silicon, mm -hmm. so then you get the harder plastic. Mm -hmm and that would mm -hmm. be less comfortable yes. but obviously if you've got an allergy yeah you wouldn't want the right. silicon on there do some people have metal allergies on the front? they do you can have a nickel allergy and if you wear a pair of spectacles for too long with metal sides um and you perspire a lot mm -hmm. you'll see when you start to see the inside of the frame of the side starts to go a little bit green. Mm -hmm. yes. And if that is the case, that means the nickel has come to the surface because mm -hmm. it has the same reaction as copper. Right. So the fact that it's come to the surface, mm -hmm. if you continue to wear those mm -hmm. with that uh, nickel at the surface, you can then develop a mm -hmm. nickel allergy. Right. And you'll start to get a rash at the side of your head right okay all right mm. it would only be close to the ear unless the frame is very badly fitted mm. um, sometimes you see people and they take the glasses off and they've got a deep ridge or cross here where the frame was mm. now if that is the case you've got the problem then that the frame is actually too small mm. now we can adjust the sides on the frame 
by taking a hold here using the correct pliers and we can actually bend that out a little bit yeah, but you can only do it a little bit yeah i'll see it'll be popping out like that but yes yeah. um it would help now if you'll notice this particular frame has got a curved side mm -hmm. can you see how that's curved yes that's called a comfort fit side mm -hmm. So it actually comes away from the head and then comes back in right. where it needs to grip right. behind your ears. So it doesn't press against the temple. That's correct, yeah. And that would then avoid getting them tram lines. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted a smaller front on the frame, mm -hmm. so smaller lenses, mm -hmm. um, they can have two ways of doing it. You could ha end up having a few millimetres out here where the join is, mm -hmm. uh, or you'd have this comfort fit side so the side comes out mm -hmm. and back in mm. and that way you can get a smaller frame onto a larger head so particularly good if you've got a high prescription mm. um, other measurements that can be done the angle of tilt so if you put them on and also the back vertex now the angle of tilt I can show you by using the ruler that how that can be different but I haven't got the tool with me at the moment to show you mm. the, the actual measurements but if so at the moment you've got that now you're wearing it and you can see that's the angle you could tip it in mm -hmm. so that the bottom of the lens is closer to your face mm -hmm. now that's particularly good on things like varifocals and bifocals mm -hmm. where it then helps to prevent the reading area from being obstructive mm. and it can also sharpen up the distance but only as you look forward so you can bring the near part of the lens at the bottom closer to the eye yeah so when you look down that's the time you'll see right through the reading part right the distance part you look forward mm -hmm. and it, because it's actually bringing it closer to your face mm -hmm. It, to your eyes it makes the vision look that little bit sharper right. so what would happen if you'd taken the wrong pd or uh, you would get something called a prismatic effect right and that can cause distortion in your vision so it's so crucial that you get the right measurements mm. this is why if you purchase from your optician you've got more chance of getting that prescription made accurately so the prescription right. glasses can be made correctly yes but only to the measurements that are given so it's not all about lens power it's, it's where they're sitting in relation yes. to your dimensions you could have a, a lens that's how to five out mm. because your eyes have changed yeah. but if they're sitting in the correct position you probably wouldn't notice that right on the other hand you could have the exact prescription that you need but if the pupils are out, the pupil distance is out by two or three millimetres, mm. you can really struggle to see out of those glasses. And is that worse on a higher prescription? Oh, it's a lot worse on a higher right. prescription. So the higher prescription, the more accurate it has. The, yeah, the smaller prescriptions, if the p prescription is, if the pupil distance is slightly out, right. you may not notice it. But the, the higher the prescription goes, the less it has to be out for you to yes, notice yes. that there's a problem. Ah, okay, right. right. So these measurements are very important when yes. fitting glasses. Yeah, the, there is another measurement that can be done, mm -hmm. which I can do now. So if you look forward, mm -hmm. and this is called the vertex distance. And what I'm actually looking for is the back of the lens mm -hmm. to go level with the cornea, so the front of your pupil. And in this particular case, that's 11 millimeters on that frame. Right. A different frame, will have a different gap mm -hmm. and again if you've got more than five diopters of prescription then that gap can alter the prescription yeah so if you've got more than five diopters of prescription plus or minus mm -hmm. when the optometrist does the eye test um the, should be recorded it will vertex. be recorded onto the record yeah yeah so that we're aiming to set the frame yeah to the exact because the frame I choose could be a different back vertex distance to what yes. the trial frame is so you and have to compensate I would then have to change the prescription right, right. which I'm a dispensing optician mm -hmm. so I can change the mm -hmm. prescription mm -hmm. 
if somebody else was testing, it was doing the dispensing and they weren't a qualified and registered optician, mm -hmm. then they would have to go back to the optometrist and ask the optometrist to change the prescription. Right. Which can be a little bit inconvenient yes. at times. Yes. And also, it makes it look like the optical assistant doesn't know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. But the real aim is, so we'll say, for example, that one now is measured at 11, but actually in the test room, the back vertex was measured, the, the prescription was measured at 12 millimetres. Mm -hmm. So in this case, I can alter this frame by moving the pads. Mm -hmm. So I'm just pulling the pads out a little bit. Now when you put that back on, the frame is sitting slightly away from your nose. And again, if you turn your head to the side now, and I measure, and actually I've brought that to 12 millimeters now. Mm -hmm. So that would mean that was exactly the same. It's always better to get the frame sitting in the same position than to have to compensate yeah. the prescription. Yeah. Because as you wear a pair of spectacles, and as you push them, against your nose for example mm, mm. each time you do that you could be altering the pads by a fraction of a millimeter mm -hmm. so although i've altered I, I would have altered the prescription the spectacles could now be at a different distance from your nose from your eyes right. so that altered prescription wouldn't work anymore mm -hmm. okay so much better to be able to say right let's get it set at 11 or 12 as you was tested mm -hmm. We can then set that mm. frame at 12 millimetres. Mm. If you are pushing it up your nose or moving it mm. and you knock the... Mm. But obviously you I'm, can I'm always set the glasses back frames, to the way. You can't adjust them so much, can you? No, you can't do as much, but you can do some adjustments. Mm. And that's where partly angling the frame mm. can do. Mm. So that's your, called your pantoscopic tilt. Right, OK. Lovely. All right.